Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make a cute horse cake topper. I'm using Saracino modelling paste and I've coloured it with Magic Colours Chocolate Extra. The first thing we're going to make is the body, so you want 17 grams of chocolate coloured modelling paste, roll it into an egg shape and then use the Dresden tool to create three lines on the front of the paste to create the front legs. Once you've got your lines created, add a small V shape at the top of the middle line. The little V shape is there to look like where the top of the legs join the chest of the animal. Then go round with the tool and just neaten up and deepen the lines. Because we want the front legs to sit a little bit proud from the rest of the model, I've just pressed down with my thumbs on either side of the line to push the rest of the paste back. Next, I'm creating a space for the hooves to sit at the bottom of the legs, so I'm just using the wide end of the Dresden tool to push the paste backwards. And here's a view from the side so you can see the paste I've pushed back now sits flush with the rest of the body. For the hooves I've used sugar flare chestnut paste colour. The front hooves I've got 0.7 grams of modelling paste which I've rolled into a ball and then flattened between my fingers into a chunky disc before shaping and squaring off the edges. Then I've cut it in half and I'm just popping it underneath the front legs. You can find a list of materials and the weights used in this tutorial in the description box below. Next we're going to work on the back legs, so I've got 2 grams of chocolate modelling paste which I've rolled into a short sausage shape. I've started working with this larger scalpel knife now instead of the smaller ones that I used to work with. I can leave a link in the description box below so if you'd like to purchase one you can find it there. Now we're going on to the hooves again, so I've got 1.5 grams of chestnut modelling paste which I have split in half into two even sized balls, rolled it into that chunky disc shape or little cylinder and then I'm attaching it to the cut edge of the legs that we created earlier. I'm now cutting an angled piece off of the top of each leg so it fits against the body better. Then we need to use a little bit of glue to attach the legs to the side of the body. You can make your own edible glue by using 30 parts boiled water with one part tylo powder. Or just wing it, put some water in a pot and then add a sprinkle of tylo powder on top. If it's too gel-like, add some more water. If it's too runny, add some more CMC. I've attached the legs on either side of the body with the hooves facing forwards. I actually really want to call them hoofers, I don't know why. Anyway, here's the model from different angles so you can see what it looks like. And now we're moving on to the tail. So I've got 4.5 grams of black modelling paste. I'm just using the Saracino black, so I didn't colour this myself. And I'm rolling it into a tapered sausage, so it's got two thin ends. I'm going to attach one end to the base of the back and then wrap the other end around the side of the body and then over the leg. If you really enjoy my tutorials, you can find more of them on my Facebook page and I also have a subscribers group where you get exclusive tutorials monthly. You can find more information on that on my Facebook page or feel free to leave a comment below and I will get back to you. Now back to the model, we're using the Dresden tool to add lines down the length of the hair to make it look like separate hair pieces. Um, probably used the wrong wording there, didn't I? Separate hair pieces makes it sound like he's wearing a wig or extensions. Here's the model from different angles so you can see how the lines run down the length of the paste. And now we're onto the head. So the first thing we're going to do is create the muzzle. So I've got 1.5 grams of chestnut coloured modelling paste and I've just cut that in half with the scalpel. Then I'm using my fingers just to neaten it up so that it's got a nicer edge at the back where the knife went through. Then I have got, how much have I got? 20 grams of the chocolate coloured modelling paste which I rolled into a ball. Then I've just gently flattened the front there before popping the muzzle in place. The muzzle sits right at the bottom of the head. Now I'm adding in the mouth, I'm using the Serac K2220 tool. Um, this tool is like a silicone tip or a rubber tip tool so it's really good for drawing on the icing. And then I'm poking the tip of the tool into the ends of the smile there to add like little dimples. Now I'm using the Squires Kitchen Ball tool to add two little holes for the nostrils and then flipping that tool over and using the larger end to add the holes for the eyes. I've pushed the ball tool in fairly deeply, so it's about a 4mm hole there. That makes it easier when you pop the balls into the eye socket, they just fill the hole and then you can give it a pat and they will sit nice and flush with the rest of the face. If you find the ball of paste is too big or too small, then use a cocktail stick or a scriber tool to pull the white paste out. I'm now using my thumbs just to push down on the eyes to create eye socket shapes around the eyes there, so it's just ever such a shallow indent. Then I'm using the medium ball tool, so the small end of the medium ball tool to push in the holes for the pupils before filling with two small balls of black modelling paste. Once the balls are in, give them a pat so that they lie flush with the white paste. 
You can also use a modeling tool to do this if you have long fingernails or you just can't get your finger into position. Then we're gonna add on the eyelashes. So I've got two extremely small balls of black modeling paste, which I'm rolling in the palm of my hand into tapered sausages before applying a little bit of glue around the upper and outer edges of the eye. You can just see it slightly off camera there, but I've wiped the glue on the back of my hand so the paintbrush is just a little bit tacky. And then I use the paintbrush to pick up that small piece of paste before fitting it into position around the eye. So the reason I use the paintbrush as opposed to my fingers or a modelling tool is because that little piece of paste is really, really delicate. If I use anything that's too strong, then it's likely to squash it and damage it. So the paintbrush is perfect in the fact that it can move the paste, pick it up and fit it into position. It's at this point in a tutorial where I start to wonder if anyone is actually still watching. So if you are watching, please pop a comment below and let me know if you're enjoying the tutorial. And of course, you can always suggest future tutorials for me to create for my YouTube channel. To give the eyes a little bit more life, I'm going to add two small balls of white modelling paste, one on each eye. So I've used a little bit of edible glue there before placing the white ball. If you struggle rolling pieces of paste that are that small, you can use a small sugar pearl, some paint or even some royal icing to draw the little dot. I'm now shaping the top of the head so I'm just pinching the top of the head on either side just to bring the sides in a little bit before going around with my fingers and neatening up and removing any fingerprints that I've left. Now we're moving on to the ears. I've got 0.7 grams which I've divided into two even sized balls so two 0.35 gram balls again really tiny. Rolled them both into teardrop shapes and then flattened them between my fingers so they're just slightly chunky before adding a little bit of glue onto the top of the model and attaching the ears in position. Um, if you find that you're struggling to weigh things out I can also pop a link below to a set of digital scales which weighs down to 0.1 grams. They're super handy when you're following tutorials like this. For the horse's fringe, I've got three grams of black modeling paste, which I've rolled into a long teardrop shape. Sorry, it's gone off camera a bit there. And then I have attached that to the top of the head and I'm gonna use my fingers to blend it and fit it in position. So to begin with, I just rolled it into that teardrop shape, flattened it ever so slightly, and then I'm actually gonna do the bulk of the work and the fitting on the model. And thus ensues lots and lots of fiddling with a piece of paste on a video. <laughs> I hope you enjoy my fiddling. So we're going to add in some hairlines again like we did with the tail. So I'm just using the Dresden tool. I've got the Squires Kitchen tool here if you would like to purchase it. Again, link in the comments below. You can also use the PME or other Dresden tools as well. They're all pretty much the same. So this is roughly what you want the hair to look like, it finishes between the ears and then I'm going to add in a small piece of hair that runs from the ear down across the forehead and not have the bottom of the piece of hair line up with the other pieces so it's just like a little separate strand just to break up the hair and the forehead a little bit. Now I'm going to attach the model or the head onto the model so I'm just using the ball tool there to create a little hollow. Now you can use a cocktail stick in the model if you want to help support it but you don't really need it so I've painted a little bit of glue inside the hollow or and on top of the body and then attach the head in position and now I'm going to use the um, use the now I'm going to go back and finish the, the hair so I've got another three gram ball of the black modeling paste shaped it in exactly the same way and I'm fitting that over the back of the head before using the Dresden tool to draw more hairlines in is our horse tutorial complete you can use this model on a cake you can always scale up the size to make it larger for a cake or scale it down to use it as a cupcake model i really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial please hit the subscribe and bell icon so that you can get notifications when i post my next tutorial